Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Lay. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm gonna give you an example problem, actually three example problems, on how to use load factors to come up with the loads you need for your reinforced concrete member. It's gonna be awesome. Let's work some example problems. I'm gonna work three problems here, and I wanna find the factor design load for the moment and axial load for each one of these structures. And these structures are pretty simple, but it's good to start out simple and then build up from there. So I've got a simply supported beam. It's 15 foot long. It has these, this live load and dead load on it. Okay. And again, I want to find the design moment. So like the maximum moment and the maximum axial load. Now, first of all, I can see there is no axial load on this problem. So I'm not worried about that. Axial load equals zero for this one. We'll come back to that. Now let's start out with these loads. What we're gonna do is we're gonna transform these live loads and dead loads into another equivalent load. Let's see that in action. To do that, we're actually gonna be using these load factors that I talked about in a previous video. And we'll start out using the first one, 1.4 times the dead load. Now, you might say, how do you know which of these load factors to use? And when you're starting out and you don't know anything, you don't know. So you gotta try to try them all. What you'll learn over time is that some of them will be used in certain circumstances and some of them will be used in others. Most of the time, if you have dead load or live load, you'll be using either this equation or this equation. And those are the first two that we're gonna use. This is just a simplified version of this one. We'll start out with the top one, then we'll use the next one. 1.4 times the dead load. That's equal to 1.4 times 1.3 and that's equal to 1.82 kips per feet. What's a kip? A thousand pounds. 1,000 pounds is a kip. 1.82 kips per foot. Now let's try the other one. 1.2 dead plus 1.6 live. 1.2 times 1.3 plus 1.6 times one. Well, that's equal to 3.16 kips per foot. 3.16 kips per foot. Well, this one's larger, right? So this one we would say controls. So now what we're gonna do is we've taken this combination of live load and dead load We've used our load factors to put safety factors on top of that so we can know what to design for. And we're now going to, in a sense, come up with a new structure, a new structure with this on top of it, with now 3.16 kips per foot, a new structure combining that live and dead load together. And now we're gonna just dissolve, solve for the maximum moment. Well, I know from a simply supported beam with a uniform load on it from structural analysis that the moment diagram is gonna look like this. And I know that maximum point on the moment diagram is going to be WL squared over eight. If you don't know that, then go study structural analysis. The moment is now equal to 3.16 times the length of the beam, which is 15 feet, squared all over 8, and that's equal to 158 kip feet. 158 kip feet. So that's what we have to design for. That's the maximum moment, and we don't have we have zero axial load. One problem down. Let's do another one. We're gonna make this one a little bit more complicated. Now this one's got live load 
It's got dead load. It's got wind load. It also has an axial load over here. This axial load's all by itself. Let's handle that first. I'm going to take 1.4 times my dead load. That's equal to 1.4 times 1, which is equal to 1.4 kips. 1.4 kips, or 1,400 pounds. So if I draw my new structure, my axial load on that structure that I'm designing for is 1.4 kips. You'd say, well, how did you know how to use that equation? Well, if we go back and look at the other ones, I only had dead, right? I only had dead load. And the one with the highest load factor on all the dead loads was that one. That's the one to use. Now let's look at the distributed loads. I've got now live load. I've got dead load. I have wind load. Let's see what happens. Now, I'm going to repeat the live load and dead load calc I did before. This is now for the distributed load. And this one was for the axial load. So distributed load, 1.4 times my dead, which is 1.3. And that's equal to 1.82. And now I had 1.2 times my dead plus 1.6 times my live. Now, what else is in that equation? 1.2 dead, 1.6 live. Oh, I don't have any of these. I don't have snow or roof load or rain load. I don't have any of these. So I, it's just, just gonna simplify. That's gonna be equal to 1.2 times 1.3 plus 1.6 times 1, and that's again equal to 3.16 kip per foot. Okay? But now, I've got this wind load. Is there another one that I could use that has wind load in it? Another one that has wind load. This one does. 1.2 dead plus 1 wind plus 1.0 live. And I, again, I don't have any of these. Let's try this one. 1.2 dead plus 1.0 wind plus 1 live. And that's equal to 1.2 times 1.3 plus 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1. Ugh. What's that equal to? Well, to solve that, you get 3.56 kips per feet. 3.56 kips per feet. That's the distributed load that's on the system. That's the one that controls. Look, 3.56 is more than these other two. That controls. So I'm going to use that one. So I have my new structure now. Three point five six kit per feet. That is my structure. That is my transform structure with all my loads on it. This is what I got to design for to be safe. And now I already know my axial load. I did that one. One point four kips. I'm gonna go ahead and get my moment. M again, just like I said before, is W L squared over eight, and that's three point five six times fifteen squared all over eight and that's equal to 178 kit per feet cool let's do another one 
Now this one's a little bit different. I actually left off a dimension here. That should be 15 feet, same like the other ones. And this is a very strange one. This one's got dead load coming down and wind load going up. When does that happen? Well, sometimes if you have an enclosed structure and you have an opening, when the wind comes blowing on the side of that structure, it goes in the structure and actually pushes the roof up. It tries to blow the roof off it. I know. Awesome, right? We got to make sure that this structure is still safe. And the load factors are going to help us do this. All right. So I've got dead load and wind load. Let's go look at my structures here. Dead load... Wind load. Okay, dead load. Yeah, nope. Let's see. Here's dead load. Oh, look at this one. Here's dead load and wind load in this one. Let's try it. So the axial load is zero. How nice. And now let's talk about our moment from our distributed load. So we're gonna take 1.2 dead plus 0.5 wind. Okay, so 1.2 times 0.5, that's my dead load, 0.5, plus 0.5 times, whoa, my wind load's going the opposite direction. Well, if this direction is plus, then the other direction must be minus negative two wind load. And if you solve that, you get negative 0.4 kips per foot. Hope you can see that, negative 0.4 kips per foot. Let's go on to another one. Let's go on to another one. Here we got one, then one underneath it. 1.2 dead plus one wind. Let's try that one. 1.2 dead plus one wind. That's 1.2 times 0.5 plus one times negative two. And that's equal to negative 1.4 kips per feet. Okay, let's keep looking. Oh, here's another one. In the previous video, I mentioned that sometimes when you have these weird situations where dead load can help you, dead load can actually misinform you that sometimes you actually design for only 90% of the dead load. What? Let's try this one. 0.9 dead, 0.9 dead plus one wind. 0.9 times my dead load, which is 0.5, plus 1 times negative 2, and now that value is negative 1.55 kips per feet. So which one am, am I going to design for? Well, the largest one, the largest absolute value one, right? This one is going to control, okay? That's the one we're going to end up using. So our moment is again still gonna be W squared over eight, but it's strange. Let's, well, just a second here. Let's, let's draw our composite structure. So what we're actually designing for is a structure with an uplift, an overall uplift of 1.55 kips per feet. 1.55 kips per feet. And our moment, once we do this, is again negative 1.55. My length is 15 feet squared divided by 8. And that's equal to negative 43.6. Pardon me. Kip feet. Negative 43.6 kip feet. So my moment 
actually looks like this. My moment diagram actually looks like this. The beam is actually going to try and deflect upwards. What? I know, crazy, huh? The wind is more than the dead weight. So it's going to try to lift the roof off. And we got a design for it. Okay? Thanks for watching. I'm Tyler Lay. Please subscribe to my channel. Take care. Bye.